before I start preaching tonight, there is something that God had spoken to me in this conference that I would like to get out of the way tonight before I speak tonight. It is called supernatural wealth transfer and control. Supernatural wealth transfer and wealth control. Just getting that out of the way. The Lord has shown repeatedly that a transfer of wealth and a control of wealth is hitting the church like never before. For one reason, Zechariah chapter 1 and in verse 17, he said, Cry yet, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, My cities, through prosperity, shall yet be spread abroad. My kingdom on earth shall explode on the wings of prosperity. This, this is important to us, especially as we approach the climax of the ages. Throughout scripture, we see wealth transfer. Now look at Proverbs chapter 13, verse 22 to 33. 13, 22 to 33 said, A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children. And the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. That's okay. And the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 and in verse 26, he said, For God giveth to a man that is good in his sight, wisdom, and knowledge, and joy. But to the sinner he giveth travail to gather and to heap up that he may give to him that is good before God. That is, there are people today who are gathering, who are heaping up for the sake of transfer. Before the year 2021 expires, somebody is stepping into a massive transfer. If you are saying amen, shout the Lord and say amen. If you are saying amen, shout the loudest amen. Before the year 2021 expires, the church is stepping into the realm of massive transfer, massive wealth control. Shout the loudest amen. Lift your hands and say, Father, I am ready for this transfer to happen now. Pastors, get ready. Ministers, get ready. Ministries, get ready. Evangelistic ministries, get ready. Prophetic pastoral teaching ministries, get ready. Non-church-based ministries, get ready. Businessmen, businesswomen, get ready. There is something coming for the church. There is something coming for the body. And it's coming very massively. Shout the Lord and say amen. The financial area is not what I talk about most of the time because I don't want anybody to look at me and say that is one of those pastors who are after people's money or who preach money. I don't want the tag is a, is a money preacher. No. But when I hear it, I declare it with audacity 
with authority. A dimension of money is coming that is going to persecute the devil. Hey! That is going to persecute, persecute the agenda of wickedness. That is going to make the church to fly and to run on the wings of the wing. You believe that shout the loudest, amen. The absence of money is no longer going to stop church planting. The shortage of money is no longer going to stop crusades. We have run through the country this year. From Port Harcourt to Makodi, from Makodi to Akure, from Akure all the way to Jalingo, to Akwaibom, to Asaba Delta State, to Lagos. Just crusade, crusade, crusade. I'm sure you saw some of the clips. This year, and even before now, money had never been, a, that was Akure crusade. Money did not come up as an issue for any crusade. The only challenge we had was time. The only challenge we had was time to schedule the crusades. How we wish we had plenty of time and then there would be crusade every week. The only problem we had was time. Am I communicating at all? And offerings was, were not taken at the crusade grounds. None of the crusades we took offering. Because we told the people we came for their souls, not for their money. And we didn't want anybody to say we came to their land and took money. We are stepping into a higher dimension of that. A higher dimension where resources shall... This was Bayelsa Church dedication that became like a crusade. We just came to dedicate the church and then the people outside became more than this became a crusade. Somebody lift up your right hand and just begin to speak to God right now. I am I position my life for this transfer. I am available for this transfer. I make my life available for this transfer. I make my life available for this transfer. I make myself available for this transfer. In the name of Jesus. Give the Lord the praise. Take your seat one minute. When I say wealth transfer and wealth control, there is a difference. And I'm going to show you in scripture. Look at wealth transfer from Laban to Jacob. Genesis 31 verse 7 to verse 9. Jacob said, and your father has deceived me and changed my wages ten times. But God suffered him not to hurt me. If he said thus, the speckled shall be thy wages, then all the cattle bear speckled. And if he said thus, the ring streak shall be thy hire, then bear all the cattle ring streaked. Thus, God has taken away the cattle of your father and given them that is transfer. God has taken away the cattle of your father and given them to me. When God makes the servant richer than the master. When God decided to make the tenant become wealthier than the landlord. Than the property owner. God has taken away, taken away the cattle 
mantle of your father and giving them to me. It is called wealth transfer. What happened to Joseph is called wealth control. That is Genesis chapter 39 verse 4 to 6. We experience wealth control there. And Joseph found grace in his sight. That is Potiphar. That is now, this is number two example is Joseph over Potiphar's wealth. Genesis, and he found grace in his sight, and he served him, and he made him overseer over his house, and all that he had, he put into his hand. Verse 5. And it came to pass from the time that he made him overseer in his house, and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hand. And he knew not what he had except the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. That is called wealth control. Take charge of everything that is here. You know, it is not possible for you to take charge of wealth without being impacted by that wealth. You don't have to be fraudulent. You don't have to be a thief. For somebody to say manage 100 billion dollars for him. Manage it for him. Your salary may be up to 100 million dollars. That is for, for controlling that size of wealth. Am I communicating? That is help me control this size of wealth. And so that he doesn't, you are not tempted to steal he will sufficiently stabilize you. That is wealth control. Our third example of wealth control was Joseph administering the wealth of Egypt. The whole of the wealth of Egypt. That was in Genesis chapter 40, 41 verse 39 to verse 44. Administering the whole of the wealth of Egypt. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has showed you all this there is none so district and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set you over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck and he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had and they cried before him bowed the knee and he made him ruler over all the land of egypt and pharaoh said unto joseph i am pharaoh and without you shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the earth Without you, without you, no man shall lift his hand or his foot. Take charge. That is control the wealth of this nation. Take charge of it. You are to administer the wealth and tell us what to do. There are people seated here. Very soon, nations will begin to call you. That amen is not good enough. I said nations will begin to call you. That amen is not good enough. Shout the loudest amen. And I am not telling you theory. I'm telling you what will happen from this night. Because there are billionaires in this world. Who are using their billions to sponsor satanic agenda satanic agenda satanic agenda satanic bloodshed agenda the antichrist agenda we are seeing today and all this terrible noise they are making closing the nations they are sponsored by satanic billionaires terrorism is being sponsored by demonic billionaires billionaires of the bond woman we are trusting the lord for billionaires in the church to rise that will push the gospel to the ends of the earth and some of them are seated here right now if i believe i shout the lord and say amen one day somebody 
called one of my people and, and he said, someone sent him to me. And I said, I'm no longer in the church. He said, please, can we see you at home? I said, no. Home is not where people... I mean, if I allow people to see me at home, then I will have no rest, no place of rest. No rest in church, no rest at home. Well, he insisted on one good his way down and gave me a message from somebody I had never met. He said, the person said, I should give you this. Just pray for him. I opened it a draft. Many, many, many zeros. And I... Can, can I call him? And I spoke with him and prophesied over his life. And from then, I had been prophesying over his life. That man today is a commander and a controller of nation's wealth. He bought two aircrafts at once for mining that can locate any mineral in the earth from up. Say here there is gold. Here there is uranium. He said when he bought it, the people who were selling it wanted to know whether it's a black man who is buying it. Because no, they have not sell, sold such to any black man. Last time we spoke, he said, presidents of countries will call him and say, where should we meet? We have gold in our country. Can you take it over and mine it for us? I spoke to him. I said, get ready for South America and the Caribbeans because there is work for you there. He said, three presidents there are already calling me. Born again, solid, tongue talking. So I am saying that to let, they said, we can trust you. That's what they told him. We can trust you. There are Josephs that God is raising over nations. And many of them are seated here or watching online right now. And if you are among them, you will shout the loudest, Amen. If you are saying Amen, shout the loudest, believers, Amen. Shout the loud most believers, Amen. Lift your right and say, Father, I am available to be positioned in this end time transfer of wealth give the lord a praise and take your seat very very quickly that was joseph over egypt number four example of the wealth transfer was from the egyptians to the israelites you know the story from the egyptians to the israelites in exodus chapter 3 and in verse 21 god said i will give these people favor in the sight of the egyptians and it shall come to pass that where you go you shall not go empty i will give these people favor exodus chapter 11 and in verse 3 exodus 11 and in verse 3 and the lord gave the people favor in the sight of the egyptians moreover the man moses was very great in the land of egypt in the sight of pharaoh's servants and in the sight of the people god gave them favor and then in Exodus chapter 12 and in verse 36, the Bible said concerning, and the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they lent unto them such things as they required, and they spoiled the Egyptians. I prophesy to someone here today the kind of favor that is going to give you unusual resources is coming your way. You heard pastor testify in the morning that he's asked to come and dedicate an estate and finishes dedicating the estate and on his way going and then the estate owner said, excuse me, the Lord just spoke to me 
that the estate you just dedicated, I should give it to you. Not bicycle. <laughs> God just spoke to me. I should, I should give it to you. That's the kind of favor we are talking about in this season. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And the Lord gave the people favor. That is the kind of favor we are talking about in this season. It is coming for somebody here right now. Example number five or number six, transfer from Haman to Mordecai. Many of us did not know that it was not only the pit that Haman dug for Mordecai that he inherited. There was an absolute transfer. Whatever Haman planned for Mordecai, he inherited it. And what was Haman's, Mordecai inherited. Do you understand that? In Esther chapter 8 verse 1, you see that transfer. On that day, did the king Ahasuerus give the house of Haman, the Jews enemy, unto Esther the queen, that is the estate of Haman, as Haman had been hung in the place of Mordecai. Now, take his house and mordecai came before the king for esther had told what he was unto her verse 2 and the king took off his ring which he had taken from haman and gave it to who he gave he gave haman's authority to mordecai as mordecai inherited the debt he was given as haman inherited the debt he was given to mordecai Mordecai inherited Haman's authority and he didn't stop there. And Esther set Mordecai over the house of Haman. So Haman's authority, Haman's prosperity was transferred to Mordecai. Those who hate you with a passion, God is about to transfer their resources into your hands. It's about to transfer their influence, transfer their favor. I don't know if anybody is receiving this prophetic word here. Those who wish you dead, who don't think you have the right to live, who don't think you have a reason to, be, to exist, who wish you disaster in this season, Jehovah God is transferring their world, their influence, their power, their authority. Shout the loudest. Amen. That's the kind of transfer that is about to happen. He that digeth a pit shall fall inside. That's the kind of transfer that is about to happen. That is the transfer from Haman to Mordecai. And finally, number six is from the kings of the earth to Solomon. The kings of the earth, the kings of the earth released their resources. It traveled in the direction of Solomon. In First Kings chapter 10 and in verse 23 all the way to verse 24. So King Solomon exceeded all the kings of the earth for riches and for wisdom. How? And all the earth sought to Solomon to hear his wisdom which God had put in his heart. And they brought every man his present. They brought they brought vessels of silver vessels of gold garments and armor and spices and horses and mules a rate year by year by year by year and solomon gathered together the chariots and the horsemen he had a thousand and four hundred chariots one hundred one thousand four hundred jeeps twelve thousand little cars whom he bestowed in the cities for chariots and with the king at jerusalem somebody say a loud amen have you ever seen where a king is kings are deliberately enriching a king that is already rich 
A man didn't need money yet. They were transferring their money to him in mass. First Kings chapter 10 verse 14 talked about the weight of gold that came to Solomon. Other people went to gold. Gold came to Solomon. Now the weight of gold that came. Gold traveled. Gold walked. Gold had feet. Gold became a person and came to Solomon. Somebody say a loud amen. Somebody say the loudest amen. Is there someone here who is ready to take this prophetic word? What others are looking for shall begin to locate you in this season. All I am asking is for God to open your eyes to what I see. To what I see, to what I see. Before I came into this into this service this evening, I saw I saw in the realm of the revelation like limousines and those kind of kind of things being given as gifts. Now it is not this I believe that it is far more than the physical vehicle. I believe that things that are valuable and treasurable, what other people consider the top of the range kind of things, are being redirected and handed to somebody. Somebody shout the loudest, Amen. Lift your hands and say, Father, I collect what is mine. I collect it. I receive it. I take delivery of all that is mine. I take delivery of all that is mine. This transfer that God is talking about, I receive. I receive. I receive. I receive. Open your mouth and begin to receive. I receive the transfer. I receive the transfer. I receive the transfer. I receive the transfer. I receive. Open your mouth and pray. Something. 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 I receive. I receive. I receive. Something is coming. Something is flowing. Something is coming. Something is flowing. Something is being released. Father, let it be. Let it be. Let it be. In the name of Jesus. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Let's wrap this up, then we'll move. What are the secrets of supernatural wealth transfer and wealth control? What who are the kind of people that are qualified for wealth transfer and wealth control? What conditions should we meet meet? What qualification should we possess? Number one is called the God first mentality. The God first. When it is God first, when it is kingdom first, the God first mentality. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. The God first mentality. When God is first and God is last and everything in between in your life, then you are set for the massive transfer. When God moves you more than things, when God is more important to you than gold, when God is more important to you than gold, then things will look for you. The God first mentality. 
Somebody say a loud amen. amen. Number two is vision for supernatural supply. Vision. Until man can see it, God can't give it. Vision for supernatural su supply. In fact, vision for massive wealth transfer. In Genesis chapter 13 and in verse 15. Say, from verse 14. And the Lord said unto Abraham, after that Lot was separated from him, lift up now thine eyes and look from the place where thou art northward and southward and eastward and westward for all the land which thou seest to thee will I give it and to thy seed forever. If you can't see it, God can't give it. Unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or imagine. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. You know, Joseph did not arrive at the future by accident. Joseph arrived by vision. He saw where he was going. He saw where he was going. Please, beloved brothers and sisters, expand your vision. Expand your mentality. Expand the way you think. Begin to think in terms of nations and territories. Commanding realms of influences. Begin to think in those terms. Begin to think in those terms. In terms of, in terms of territories. One of the young men said I should come and dedicate for him two vessels, two ships, big ship, two of them. And I said, let's go out, come and dedicate it for you. Because it was, he had, he was meant to get a, 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 a supply, a very, very mega, multi-billion contract or something, and some powerful influential people in the, in, in, in the nation wanted to divert it and I told him, I said that thing will not be given to the wrong it, I said it, the contract will not work until the right thing is done so it hung for five years this one wants to take it, it couldn't go that one wants to take it, it couldn't go including powerful people who have been number one before he couldn't move. He couldn't move. After five years, they rotated back and called back, came back. He rotated back. I said, I will overturn, overturn, overturn until it comes to the hand of whom it is and I will give it to him. It came back to his hand. Job was given and then it required him buying two ships to execute, to, 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 to function. He went to the bank and Top bank manager said, you want to come and borrow money from here? Where do you worship? Who is your pastor? Say, Dunamis. Say, me, I go to Dunamis too. We don't believe in such borrowing. Call the pastor, let him pray for you. <laughs> and then, long story made short, after he bought the two vessels, he said, I should come and dedicate it I think in the port in Warrior or so. So I said, so how did it go? So how did who assisted you with the money? He said, not a dime from no bank. Money came. That is his legitimate money. And he bought two vessels, not two bicycles. Anything that is yours that anybody is trying to divert, Jehovah is overturning, 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 and it is coming back into your hands. If you are a believer, shout the loudest, Amen. Vision for supernatural supply number three is. Access to divine ideas, creativity, inspiration. Access to divine ideas, creativity, inspiration, wisdom. 
God uses wisdom to create wealth. All the people of the earth came to seek Solomon for wisdom. And as they came, they came with their wealth. What Jacob used that became the transfer of Laban's wealth was a technology he got from heaven. How he could paint wood and make the animals to see the wood and deliver according to what they saw. The wealth of Solomon was wisdom rooted. The wealth of Job was rooted in lights and secrets. He said how I was in the days of my youth when the secrets of the Lord was upon my tabernacle. The wisdom of Joseph was wisdom rooted. As, as wise as you are, seeing that no one is as wise as you, you shall become, you shall control the wealth of this land. Many of us, we believe so much in labor and that is alright, I'll come to that. But there is a dimension of idea. You know, most of the billionaires of the world today are idea-based billionaires. Whether it was on tw of Twitter or Facebook or, or or, 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 or most of those things they never really did anything much in terms of physical things but they just generated some ideas and so let's people talk to each other on, on facebook and see the, 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 the picture of somebody let somebody do and before you can know it billions amazon guy was just ideas people were laboring and selling things in physical shop and he created shop that you couldn't see and then, before he knew it, he went up. And these things belong to the church. Because Jehovah God is the father of wisdom, the father of light. We are the ones that you have access to original light. As I speak right now, between now and this time next year, if Jesus tarries to come, idea made billionaires are rising out of the church wisdom made billionaires are rising out of the church creativity generated billionaires creativity generated billionaires are rising out of the church and some of them are here right now suddenly god gives you a prophetic dream in the night and then you are seeing some technologies and then you are seeing some operations and then you are seeing some moves and then you are seeing some transactions and then you are seeing what to do and your eyes are opened and you step out in the physical and you manifested it that's right it's already happening suddenly you are praying in tongues and your eyes open ideas rushing inspiration arrive and suddenly god is saying step into this realm and this is kingdom billions for kingdom business this is kingdom billions for kingdom business this is kingdom billions for kingdom business is there anybody who is about to be a partaker in this realm shout the loudest amen you know for me to preach on this in a convention like this is a serious matter we preach other things this one is just we, we talk about this transiently it's a serious matter because most churches are choking for financial scarcity financial shortage they are choking they are choking but those days are over forever those days are over forever most children of God are looking up to people of the world and are being pitied by people of the world because of scarcity and shortage. And those days are over forever. If you believe that, shout the Lord and say, Amen. Lift your right and say, Father, I receive wisdom. I receive innovation. I receive concepts. I receive divine ideas for kingdom billions for kingdom business i receive i receive i receive i receive now shout the loudest amen take your seat in the presence of the lord is anybody getting anything out of this 
that is access to divine ideas, creativity, wisdom. Genesis 30, 27, we saw how Jacob painted, all right, Laban talked about God blessing him because of Jesus. Now, number five, is it four? It's four, okay. Number four is existence as a solution provider. Generational solution provision. Existence as a generational solution provider. Don't just look for money. Find problems to solve. Let God open your eyes to the most important needs of society. Meet the needs. Russell Conwell, founder of Temple University, he said, if you will love your neighbor as yourself in reality, you will never be a poor person. And you know what he meant? Try to find where people are suffering and then do something about it. What turned, what turned what turned Joseph into a, a, a wealth commander, a resource controller, was that they asked him to do an assignment of interpreting dream. He did. And he refused to stop there. He went further to provide solution. Pharaoh, this is the problem in the land, but I want to give you the solution. This is the solution. The seven years of plenty open up storehouses in the land. Preserve the food. I can also show you how to preserve the food for 40 years without it spoiling. And when you have done that, just do this and do this and do that. And Pharaoh said, you cannot recommend another person for me to do this. Implement your recommendation. Is God speaking to somebody here? Let God open your eyes. Most times everybody is running in the same direction. Everybody wants to do estate business. Everybody wants to do government contract. Everybody wants to do a transport. Everybody's just wanting to do something. Meanwhile, there is a vacancy somewhere. There is a need somewhere. There is something that, that, that people are desperately looking for. There is an answer somewhere. There is a, a realm where people need help. And nobody has seen it. And now, if you can pray and say, Lord, open my eyes to, to see the needs of my generation and show me what to do about it. You just stepped into billions. One of the billionaires that gives us his aircraft free of charge every time we are going for crusades. He heard about a need somewhere and he decided to deploy himself into that need as somebody who had nothing. Zero from zero, he deployed himself into that need and then stepped into billions. In the realm where he is today, he's number one in this country, in his realm. He got his first aircraft at age 27 or something, and he has bought nine since then. Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying here today? Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? Yes. Very effortless. If you see him and they say, he has this, you won't believe it. Very humble. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Epitome of integrity. He just found need and began to meet the need. Began to meet the need. Began to meet the need.
He said, just give me crusade schedules so that we can schedule it into our program for availability of aircraft. No, there are different realms. I prophesy to someone here today. God is going to open your eyes. Is going to open your eyes. Is going to open your eyes to identify the area of need that you will deploy yourself. There are some of us here already. God has opened your eyes to some things. If there are hitches along the line, I declare those hitches are collapsed. Those hitches are collapsed. Those hitches are collapsed. If you believe that, shout the loudest. Amen. Just identify needs. Identify them. Identify running transportation business. Identify places where the people are most stranded in the transport route. Identify. I just, I just Lord, show me. You see, when you meet people's needs, they will gladly pay you for meeting their needs and thank you for being available. Thank, they will, they will thank you. I heard the story of two people who went to India in the middle of the 60s. Two of them. One saw poverty in India. The other one saw opportunity there. He saw everybody barefoot in the middle of the 60s in India. He said, these people are barefooted. They are so poor. Let me make plastic shoes for them. Plastic, you know, the lowest quality of footwear. He went back to America, made the those quality, the people rushed at it, appreciatively rushed at it, and turned the guy effortlessly into billions. Because one saw poverty, another one saw opportunity, opportunity to make a difference, opportunity to change the lives of the people. And while changing the lives of the people, he didn't go empty handed. What is the secret of wealth transfer? Number six, now you see. Number five is walking in divine favor. Divine favor. Favor is superior to labor, is superior to connection. Walking in divine favor. In Psalm 44 and in verse 2, he said, Go to verse 3. For they got not the land in possession by their own soul. Neither did their own arm save them, but thy right hand and thine arm and the light of thy countenance because you had favor unto them. Favor will give you what the sword can't give you. Favor will give you what the labor can't give you. The favor of God can turn over a whole organization and say, take this corporation. The favor of God can give you a whole estate, a whole property, can, can, just, can just position you. It is called divine favor. Anything you will do to have favor, do it. And I'm talking of favor with God. If I'm to preach on favor, it's a separate topic altogether. But I know that the pre if you carry the presence of God, that is the fragrance of favor. The, the perfume of God is called favor. Am I communicating? That is the fragrance of favor. If you are positioned in his presence at the place of worship, at the place of prayer, at the place of communion, at the place of the word, anything you will do to get favor, to get the presence of God, it will guarantee you favor. And when you become favorable to people, God becomes favorable to you. Because with the merciful 
thou will show yourself merciful when you are a man or a woman who knows how to show favor to those who are less than you then you are at the point where jehovah will show you favor like you have never seen before somebody say a loud amen walking in favor so favor is something to cry for in the business world i step out today in favor lord i make demands on favor for thou will bless the righteous with favor will thou compass him about as with a shield psalm 5 and in verse 12 father compass me shield me with favor against hatred shield me with favor against the agenda of the wicked shield me with favor and as i preach right now you heard what bishop abia said the other day when we preach on healing god heals when we preach on deliverance god delivers when we preach on favor god releases favor when we preach on wealth transfer god releases wealth so I, as i'm preaching on favor now somebody is stepping out of here with the kind of favor you have never seen before with the kind of favor in ministry favor in business favor in your career you have never seen before i see the massive transfer of wealth coming into somebody's hand if you are that one shout the loudest amen if you are the one shout favor Take your seat. And this year of 2021 is not permitted to end until that favor translates into results. Say amen like a believer. What is the next secret of wealth transfer? Very important. Walking in financial integrity walking in financial integrity god wants to give resources to people who can be trusted why did god allow joseph to manage the wealth of egypt because he gave him the wealth of potiphar and nothing was missing. Walking in integrity. We saw that earlier on. In Genesis chapter 39 verse 4, 5 and 6. Nothing was missing under the watch of Joseph. While he served Potiphar. There are so many people who would go to hell. If God makes them rich. So God says, remain poor so you can go to heaven. For what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? And what can a man give in exchange for his soul? So financial crookedness is the reason for material wretchedness among the saints. You see somebody praying in tongues and fasting and doing all these things and a little amount of money enters his hand. Business deal between him and another brother and you begin to hear stories. What of the money I gave to you? I'm sorry, I used it for something else. Did I give you to use it for something else? Some will only declare half of the profit. Yes, what about the transaction we did? Oh yes, your, 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 your own portion of it is 50 million naira instead of 100 million. And the other guy is saying thank you because the profit was big in his eyes not knowing he has been cheated. And God said, don't take this man beyond where he is. In fact, reverse him back so that his soul can be saved. If he sees more money, he will go to hell. That's the reason. If, but if you can come to the point where you see massive money, you look away. It doesn't mean nothing to you. It doesn't mean an inch. It doesn't mean it, whether you are a pastor. 
I've seen people bring money in millions. Ghana must go that big. No, Ghana must come. I used to ask and say, why must Ghana go? Ghana must come. Big bag. And they say, I just brought this money. I said, this is for what? He said, I brought it for Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving to who? The only person we give thanks is God. So this is not my money. Don't tempt me. And don't jam my head with God. Take it to the church and let it be recited. This belongs to... This is from less... When church was less than one month. Where there was no church office and they brought offering to your house. And it had to be demarcated. Am I communicating? So God is not afraid to pass any amount through your house. This house costs billions. Roof alone. And not one CC was diverted. This is where the challenge lies. There are people, they've been paying tight, but they are still fraudulent. They've been coming to church and doing a lot of things. They are very faithful, very dedicated, but once you try them with little money, you, be, you hear stories. If you are going to ask God tonight, Lord, engrace me with general integrity, particularly financial integrity. Let me be able to see money that is not mine and look away from it. Let me be trustable, be trusted with resources, be able to be trusted with resources. And then you are effortless. The man I told you now that I said ha has gotten nine aircrafts. He said, if you give him a hundred million and you say, keep it for me. He said, if you come back in ten years, he will give you back that money in the same denomination you gave him. He said he came to the point where he stopped doing government contract because of people asking him, give us this or give us that. He said he doesn't want such temptation. So he went into his own business where he can determine his pace. And then he's into property business selling one house for $5 million. Is somebody here at all? Something is changing today. I believe somebody is seeing a missing link here. I prophesy. See, whatever God does not give you, when you take it, it destroys what God has for you. Anything God doesn't license you to take, once you take it, it destroys what God has in mind for your life. It destroys it. Can I give you an example? It's obvious. Adam, all this, the whole garden is yours. Adam and Eve, all this garden belongs to you. All of this. Possess them. But this fruit, don't eat it. If you eat it, you are gone. You have 99% you have of possession. And then you are still eyeing 1%. And then they went and ate what God asked them not to eat. As they ate just one of these, God said, I drive you from here. The one I gave you legally, you don't have access to it anymore. Move. That is, you ate a fruit and lost a garden. You lost a garden for eating a fruit. You diverted one million, you diverted one thousand dollars that God did not give you, and you lost the hundred million dollars that He was trying to bring you away. You lost it. He said it will never come anymore. Is God speaking to someone here at all? The reason why many people are still very struggling, still struggling and trying to compete with the unbelievers is that we are not aligning our lives with the principles of God. And yet we want to see the results that God gives. And God says, I don't do that. If you are a sinner, you can get money by any means. But if you want me to give you money, you must follow my procedures. 
I believe there is someone here today. God is already changing your story. God is already changing your story. God is already changing your story. God is already changing your situation. If you are that one, shout the loudest. Amen. Lift your right and say, Father, I am ready for a change of story. I am ready, Lord. Do you know that there are people that church will ask them to buy something. They will negotiate with suppliers. Church, oh, they are not afraid to dupe God. They are not afraid to dupe God. If you steal everywhere until you came and stole in church, what is your future? See, uh, this thing is 50,000. Write 60,000 on the receipt. Just write 60,000. I'll share the 10,000 with you. Or just give me the receipt. Let me fill it in. Incredible. You, it's unbelievable. And then when somebody brings the correct quote, he becomes their enemy. Who are you to come and expose us? It becomes a fight. It becomes a... If you don't have a skeleton, why are you angry that somebody else is coming to bring a quote? They will block him from accessing anybody. No, no, no. We're, we're, we're here in church. Where, where do you want to go with such useless profit? Somebody was trying to make some supplies of certain things here. And what is the price of this? This is two million. Another person said, and then, but make it 2.6 million. Why? What is the six million? What is the one on top? I can, I can handle that. And the person said, no, sir. Now, that thing that was meant to be two point something was gotten for 700,000 somewhere. Somewhere else. That is two that was still having something on top. So you see people struggling perennially. Pastor, you have fasted until your intestine is almost cutting for God to change their level. God say, don't kill yourself. God, don't kill yourself. This guy is a praying mantis that cannot forget his side hand. You can't bend that hand. It is already fixed. <laughs> but change is coming here. And that's the good thing about God. It doesn't matter how far you have gone in the right direction. A U-turn is possible. And if, if only you can say, Lord, in my past I have behaved like this. I have acted in ways. I have not been straightforward with, with finances. I have, been, I have not been clear. But today I want to be clear in my dealings. Then you will be shocked at how God will change your story. I believe there are people standing here this night or sitting down here tonight. That's right. God is about to give somebody a second chance. A second chance to do it right. A second chance to do it well. A second chance to do it correctly. If you are that one, you will shout the loudest. Amen. Number seven. Let us round up. Is walking in the covenant of giving and receiving. Walking in the covenant of giving and receiving. For as long as the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. For as long as the earth remaineth, the covenant. Before Jacob could step into any level of wealth, he entered a covenant with God. In Genesis chapter 28, verse 22. He said, Lord, I am on a journey. This stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give.
give the tent unto you. From this day forward, 10% of everything you give me shall return back to you. And God said, it is a done deal. Second Corinthians chapter 9 verse 6. Second Corinthians chapter 9 verse 6. He said, but this I say, he who sweat sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he who sweat bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposed in his heart. So let him give not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loveth a cheerful giver. And then God is able to make all grace abound toward you. That you always have enough sufficiency in all things may abound unto every good work. True giving. True giving. True giving. And true receiving. Somebody say a loud amen. In Genesis chapter 12 and in verse 2 and 3, God speaking to Abraham, he said, I will make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. I am blessing you to be a blessing. If you cannot be a blessing, you cannot be blessed. Somebody say a louder amen. Somebody say the loud most amen. Covenant practice of giving includes the tithe, which is 10% of your income. It includes sacrifices that turns around your captivities. Psalm 127 verse 1. Okay, 126 verse 1. He said, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the hidden, the Lord has done great things for them. He said, the Lord has done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. Now verse 5 is key. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Sowing in tears is called sacrifice. When sacrifice is given, when sacrifice is done, a turnaround happens. Psalm 20 verse 1 all the way to verse 3. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee. May he send you help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. What shall he do? Let him remember your offerings and accept your bond sacrifice. You see, sacrifices will not only turn around financial captivity, it changes everything. Your sacrifice, your giving, your arms giving, Cornelius has come to heaven as a memorial and heaven has decided to open the door of the gospel to the Gentiles because of your arms giving and of your prayers. Somebody say a loud amen. Somebody say the loud most amen. From the scratch of this ministry, the first anniversary of this church, offering was collected none was retained out all as small as this church is the tight of it from the beginning till now is paid accurately tight one day our income was struggling so i called the accountant then i say what is going on our income in church is struggling what's happening I hope we are paying the tight every month. He said, not really, sir. I said, what? How? He said, for some reasons, some needs, something like that. I said, what? Then all of a sudden, I asked him, I said, yourself, do you pay your own tight? He said, not always. I said, okay. So you don't understand it. You don't understand. From that day forward, anybody who doesn't understand the titan is not permitted to near the church income. Because you don't believe in the covenant of supernatural supplies and you don't believe in God enough to give him your income, you shouldn't manage his resources. That guy was almost sacked. It took God to retain him. Say, don't put this church 
into under a curse. Because God is no respecter of persons. Don't put this church under a curse. We, we, must, we must release. I don't know what anybody believes. Believe anything you want. But I started paying my tithe when I wasn't a pastor. And nobody preached it to me. I, I paid because I saw it in scripture. And, and, because, and because I saw it in scripture, I did it from 30 naira pocket money in, in high institution. And it produced for me like fire. So I started, when I started ministry, I preached it because I saw it in the Bible. I also preached it because it is my practice. I, there are pastors who say give and they don't give. That's not the kind, that's not the kind of, they say pay and they don't pay nothing. They are Melchizedek. Headquarters of receiving. <laughs> oh, they are the headquarters of receiving. They receive everything and they release to nobody. Where you see, before you can see anybody going far, there is someone on top of him. As he is here right now, he's undercover. Am I communicating at all? Tithing. Church tithe. Personal tithe. This church gives sacrifice yearly. That's every year. A that is tithe has been paid. Everything has been paid. But this is our sacrifice that is far more massive than tight for the next level. Yearly. Yearly, without fail. Not five years, not ten years, not fifteen years. Apart from junctions of life and ministry where a, a church is building, you assisted them to build, you, you, you roof the church. One day, they called us from local giant Kogi State that a property that the church was, a particular church was renting, was about to be bought over by the people of the other religion and turn it into their place of worship. I said, God forbid, not when we are alive, will they buy a church and turn it into their place of worship, not in our lifetime. That same day before evening, we wired the money to them. Go and buy that, that, that building. In millions. I don't know the pastor today. He was the pastor in, in local Jagata. I don't know the pastor today. I don't know the church till now. But the most important thing is that the church is God's church. And it's about the kingdom. You can't buy a church and turn it into your place of worship and it's not the, 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 the church of God. Impossible. Not in our lifetime. Except we are not on earth to hear that. Now, the can chairman of that state wrote us a letter. They said, thank you for bailing the church. This happens frequently. Before we came here, a ministry was doing their campground. And they were struggling to roof it. Massive roof. And I was there. I said, look. That's even before we found this land. You have a campground. We thought we are even trusting God to find one. And your only problem is roof. What is the cost? <laughs> All of it. Wired. Wired. That is how to live. That is how to live. And that is how to generate for God to to bring you into alignment with himself. As it is happening in the church, it is happening in our person. In fact, our personal giving is heavier than church giving. Until my wife told me, say, why don't we bring the church to our level? So that things can be more open. I said, we'll take it gradually with church. Hallelujah. Something is changing today. Something is changing in your life today. Something is changing in your life today. Can you have five minutes to trust God for a change of story today? Stand up on your feet. All right, take your seat one minute. Take your seat one minute. I see some practical keys delivered. Some of you your own is that divine idea divine wisdom that god would drop just one thing he would just drop something 
that will turn you into a national wonder a generational wonder and people will begin to ask what happened to this man what happened to this woman some is the integrity area they are saying lord not anymore no i i won't have a financial deal that has a challenge some it is in the in the giving area many of us are faithful in giving but we don't sow as much as we should sow faithful in tithing the tithe opens the heaven but the open heaven is bringing rain upon seed in the earth and so if the heaven is open and there are no seeds on the ground for the rain to beat it is still minimal result there are some who know how to give but they don't know how to tight they can give but no tightening that is sowing on a heaven that is closed it is like planting on land where there is no rain the result is still so they must go together and then when the level must shift drastic you do some drastic sacrifices and that can come at any time that can come at any time and of course nobody needs to tell you of givings that is direct to the priest direct to the prophet over your life as, as the Lord lays it in your heart I shy away from doing this thing from talking like this because it, there is the temptation of people thinking that you are asking them to give you. But this is my practice of over 22 years. That every time I give 10% tight, another 10% is my prophet's offering. Yeah. 20 something years without fail. Tightening is going, coming from the church. Giving to the priest also coming from the church. It works like fire. I am aware I can't be stranded by God's grace. What you give me does not determine my destiny. What I give God determines my destiny. Did you hear what I just said? What you give does not determine my destiny. What I give to God what i receive from a man does not determine my future what i release to god determines my future what i release into the kingdom determines my future and it works like fire and from now on i won't shy away from telling you as rugged as you must hear it so that your life can change and shift so that you can you can come to that realm where you sign 100, 10 million like you are signing 10 naira. Stand up on your feet with a shout of praise. Stand on your feet with a louder shout of praise. One man sat in my office and he gave me contract paper of 126 billion. And he said, please help me pray for it for execution and implementation and after i finished praying so from the day he started his come accurate titan say he does not calculate what is profit he say it's better for god to cheat him than for him to cheat god so some you say um, i made a profit of ten thousand five hundred naira so my tight is one thousand five hundred and fifty kobo 10 naira. They have to calculate it. What kind of life is that? He, said, he doesn't have the time for such calculation. He said, if they paid him 50 million, he does not say, oh, I used 40 million to do the job and I got it. Forget about it. He doesn't have such time. You paid me 50 million, five, five million is, is for God. Let him, let him receive the balance. Let him cheat me. I cannot be calculating with God. You know what he said? He said, if he is to buy a house, the way you feel when you buy Tom Tom, when you buy sweet, that is how it, he feels if he's about to buy a house. That is how effortless, like as effortless as buying sweet. He has never and will never take loan from bank. Even if you gave him a job of 100 billion, he has enough of his own money to start with it. The other one, he has, he has never borrowed from a bank. But uh, 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 the government wants to give you a job or something. And then he said, I need mobilization. He said, he can mobilize himself. 
Somebody say realms. <laughs> Somebody say levels. You are stepping there. You are already there. Can you stand up on your feet? I see some people under the gallery there. I am talking wealth control and wealth transfer. For some of you who know our church, I don't think I've preached a subject like this on a convention night video for 25 years. I don't talk money. I talk about money like that. 25 solid years. I haven't. That this is a subject for where? Let's talk about death to self. <laughs> Let's talk about prayer and evangelism. Let's talk about impacting our world. But the means, income affects impact. I'm telling you the truth. There are things, vision rides on the wings of provision. There are things God has given you to do that you can never do either as a person or as a ministry or as an organization until there is sufficient resources to get them done. And it shall be done. It shall be done. And it shall be done. Lift up your hands and your voice and let's appreciate God right now. Let's appreciate God right now. Appreciate God right now for what you have received. Appreciate God right now for what you have received. Appreciate God right now for what you have received. Appreciate God right now for what you have received. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth, Open your mouth and appreciate God. Appreciate him. Honor him. Adore him. Worship him. Glorify him. The ancient of days. The I am that I am. Father, we worship you. Father, we honor you. Father, we adore you. Father, we magnify you. Father, we glorify you. Father, we thank you because you are God. We thank you because you are God. We thank you because you are God. Thank you, Master. Yes, 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 yes. We thank you because you are God. 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 In Jesus' precious name. Say!